Hello, this is Mark with Bailey Software. This tutorial is geared towards advisors and will cover importing institutional data files. Institutional data files are available from your broker. Each day you'll receive a set of files containing the transactions, prices, positions, and security information for all your clients. Institutional files are downloaded to your PC and then imported into Fund Manager under the File Import menu. You can import prices, transactions, or positions for your interface. Uh, for this tutorial, we're going to focus on importing positions and transactions. How you obtain these files varies by broker. Many brokers make them available as a download through their website. Others email you these files each day. Schwab uses their Schwab data delivery program to automatically download the files. See the online help topic for your broker to find out how to obtain your files. From within File, Import, Transactions, select your interface, for example, Scott Trade, and press the Help button to open the online help topic for uh, your interface files. There will be some tips in there to uh, explain how to get files for your particular broker. When first getting started, you may want to import positions as of a certain date and then import transactions from the next day forward. If you have all the transaction data available back to inception, you can skip importing positions and just import all the transaction data. You would only ever import positions at most one time. If you do import positions, you'll not have historical data before this date. If you choose to import positions, try to import as early as possible so you have the maximum available historical data. If you import positions, you may want to start at the end of a quarter or year. This, this way you can start performance reporting the following period. For example, if you import positions as of 12.31.15, you would import transactions from 1.1.16 forward. In this case, you could start reporting on 1.1.16. For our tutorial today, we have one month's worth of files from Scott Trade. We'll import positions as of January 3rd, and then import the transaction files from January 4th through the end of the month. So to get started, we'll go to the File menu, and we'll say Import Positions, and we'll choose our interface, which for this tutorial is going to be Scott Trade. We already have our file selected here, uh, but you can just use the Browse button to go pick it. Most of the interface files have some sort of date in their file name to help you know what file you're looking at. Um, we're going to import all the accounts and then we don't need to worry about these import options for now and we'll just say next. You can see that um, it pulled in all the positions as of that date. Um, you can preview them um, but you'll eventually just pick finish. At this point it's fund managers asking you uh, what you want to do about the default cash account for a newly uh, creating account. It found a new account that isn't in your database and it's gonna set it up but it wants to know what to do about the default cash account. You can either create a new cash investment, not use cash, or you can pick one of the investments that it found during the import. And for this case it found a cash investment in the position import so we're going to use that. Um, I'd refer you to the uh, tracking cash tutorial for more information on this but we're going to just click OK to these and you do have to do this uh, for each account that's getting set up. You only have to do it once when you first create an account but you do have to go through each of these unless you choose the option to create a new cash or not use cash then you can make use of this option to apply it to all but for our case, we're going to have to go through each account one at a time. Okay, our positions have been imported. I'm going to close the graph window and maximize the portfolio editor window. And we're going to do a bulk reconcile to make sure everything got pulled in properly. We're going to reconcile from a Scott Trade position file, and our position files are in this folder. And we're going to reconcile against January 3rd's position file. 
And as expected, everything reconciled. We have 172 balanced accounts and no unbalanced accounts and no no statement accounts. We would expect that the reconciliation would work at this point since we imported the same position file that we're reconciling against, but this is just a good double check. Once we've imported our position file for January 3rd, we will move the January 3rd data files into an archive folder. Since we imported positions as of January 3rd, we don't want to also import uh, transactions from January 3rd as they're already accounted for in the end of day positions. Moving the January 3rd uh, files into an archive folder will enable us to do a bulk transaction import on the rest of the files in this folder. So we'll go to our Windows Explorer window where our data files are located. I'm going to create a new archive directory and move all of the January 3rd files into this archive folder. You can see that we're left with all the import files from January 4th through the end of the month. And we'll switch back to Fund Manager and this time we're going to import transactions. We go to the transactions menu and as I mentioned first you're never going to go back to the position import again. You'll only ever do that at most one time. And now we'll import the transactions from January 4th through the 31st. So you can either choose to import a single file, doing one file at a time, or you can do them in bulk, which is what we're going to do here. We're going to import all the files in this folder. We're going to do all accounts, all dates, and you generally want to leave on this option to match up by account number. This option here um, controls what happens when you find a new account. We're going to say any new accounts we're going to go ahead and create underneath Master Portfolio. And then generally you're going to just leave on both of these options. I'll go ahead and click Next. And it found another 586 transactions. Um, you can take a look through these transactions. You can sort them by any of these fields. Um, and generally you're going to want to leave on the option to automatically record corresponding entries in the default cash account. Um, I'd refer you to the tracking cash tutorial on our website for more information on that. And we'll just click finish. Didn't find any new accounts that time. Um, and so now we're going to go ahead and bulk reconcile again as of the end of uh, January. And we found we have 169 balanced accounts. We do have three accounts with no statements. These are accounts that have been closed and are no longer in our position file. Uh, so we'll just acknowledge that and say finish. Now that we've imported all our transaction files, we should move all of these into our archive folder as well so that we keep track of which files we've already imported. And that way, whatever files are in this folder you know still need to be imported. Some tips. Um, when downloading your institutional files, keep all the files in the same folder. Um, when you import transactions, the associated price and transaction files are also imported. Uh, you don't need to explicitly go import the price files. That just happens automatically when you import transactions. So every day you'll just import your transaction file or you can queue them up in that folder and import them in bulk periodically, whichever you prefer. I'd also uh, point you to our uh, cache tutorial, uh, the reconciling tutorial, which I covered a little bit here. Um, and then also there's another tutorial that explains how to set up these accounts into client level accounts. Um, I can show that real quickly. Um, you'll just create a sub portfolio called all clients, for example. And inside all clients, you're going to create another sub portfolio for each client.
And then you can drag and drop each of these account level subportfolios into the client level subportfolio. So for example, if John Doe happened to own these three accounts, you would move those into John Doe. And you would repeat that until all of these account level subportfolios are organized into clients. That way you can report at an account level, you can report at a client level, or the combination of all your clients. Uh, you can rename these uh, account level subportfolios. Uh, you want to leave the account number alone, but you could name it, for example, something like that to be more informative. Okay, uh, concludes our tutorial for today. Thank you for watching.